So apart from all the videos that I have done up till now, I still get this question so many times. How can I become a licensed pharmacist in the US? Which exams come first? What is the right path to become a pharmacist in the United States? And so in this video, we are going to break down everything step by step and we are going to discuss all the exams, which exam come first, what are the requirements, and then how exactly you can follow the path to become a licensed pharmacist over here in the US. Let's go. board after January 1st 2020 everybody is required to take TOEFL first and pass the TOEFL with desired marks in each section to qualify as an individual who can go ahead and sit for the next exam that's FPGE and the required marks for TOEFL as per the board's national boards of pharmacy are for you to have 22 marks in the reading section, listening should be 21, speaking should be 26, and writing should be 24. And failure to obtain one single mark in any of these sections makes you want to take this exam all over again. And this is one thing that most students fail at. Once you have passed TOEFL with the desired marks as per National Boards of Pharmacy requirements, next come FPGEE, that's Foreign Graduate Equivalency Exam. And after giving FPGEE, most people confuse it with FPGEC. So what FPGEC is, FPGEE is Foreign Graduate Equivalency Exam and FPGEC is Foreign Graduate Equivalency Certificate. That's something you obtain after you have passed your FPGEE exam, if that makes sense. It's basically an exam that's pretty basic in nature and makes you equivalent to a graduate from the US and I have tons and tons of video made on this exam which would be linked somewhere over here, somewhere over here and down in the description below and I also have a course in line which is going to be um, teaching you guys how to prepare for FPG and how to pass it in first attempt in line and that is available on my website and you can sign up to the waiting list of this course. Link in the description down below if you fancy checking it out. It's required you to um, do internship for about 1500 credit hours before you can opt on to take your NAPLEX and MPJE or CPJE but um, this, this, this thing varies state from state and I have heard that they have increased the um, internship requirement from 1500 credit hours all the way to 1700 to 1750 credit hours but I'm not pretty sure about it. So it varies state from state and I say this because the state where I live that's Texas and the laws over here are like if I opted to do my internship after I have done my F after I had passed my FPGE I would only have six months to re register myself as an intern and then do the entire 1500 credit hours before I can opt on to take NAPLEX and MPJE. But it's up to the person and the person chooses not to apply um, for internship within the six month period after passing the FPJE, then you have to pass your NAPLEX and MPJE before you can register yourself as an intern. But this is exclusive for Texas only and every state has different laws over here. So be very mindful of this and make sure you contact your state board after you have passed your FPG. But over here would be, I get so many questions about this one. I would like to make a note over here that Registering yourself as an intern is only possible after you have taken your FPGE and you have passed your FPGE. So anybody who wants to be an intern before they, who have just obtained their visa or maybe they have passed their TOEFL or they're sitting for FPGE, they cannot be an intern. After, so after you get your FPGE C certificate, that's when you apply to the pharmacy national, to the National Board of Pharmacy and they consider your application as an intern, if that makes sense. Another question that I get asked so many times is that if this internship is paid, how much how much the hourly rate is, and if 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 finding this internship is easy um, over here in the U.S. The reply to that would be: it honestly depends on the saturation of the market and where actually you're living. 
So the demands of pharmacists, like any other occupation, is exclusive of the particular state. Like in some states, the markets are very saturated, and they might be paying like fifty, sixty dollars an hour to a pharmacist who's like licensed and everything, with the experience and everything. While in, other, while in other areas that are remote or maybe these states that are not very populated, might be paying like seventy-five, eighty dollars an hour to the pharmacist with license and experience and everything. So. The, the fact that the internship might be paid or unpaid honestly depends on where exactly you're living and where you're applying to become an intern, if that makes sense. Then next comes NAPLEX, and this is an exam that all the pharmacists are required to take, and by all the pharmacists I mean the graduates that are from the US are required to take this exam as well. It's, an, it's a state exam, it's super, super clinical, it's not very basic like FPGEE. I might be saying this because I failed this exam recently. Video would be linked somewhere over here and down in the description below. And Applix has an entirely different criteria in comparison to FPGEE and they have entirely different resources that can be used to study for this exam and the video would, for that would be linked somewhere over here and down in the description below. Feel free to check it out. And lastly, MPJE. That, that's multi-state pharmacy jurisprudence examination. And this varies from state to state. As I mentioned, and as I mentioned earlier, st states over here have different laws. So let's say you are living in state A and you took all the exams and now you're a licensed pharmacist, but suddenly you plan on moving to state B. And let's say state B has different laws than state A. You will have to take the next exam in state B all over again. But um, it's never a bad idea to have multiple licenses. And I mean, if you, let's say at some point you plan on moving back to state A, you will still have the license to practice pharmacy in state A and state B as well, if that makes sense. But if you plan on moving from state A to state B and state B, let's say, has different laws than state A, you have to take the last exam all over again. Be able to practice pharmacy as a pharmacist in state B. And again, if this video provided you any value, please don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to my channel. I have an entirely new course on FPGEE that will be available exclusively on my website, exclusively to the people who are going to be signed into the waiting list. The waiting list is not going to be very long and it's going to be available for a very short amount of people, at least in the beginning. So don't forget to sign up to my course if um, you fancy checking it out. The link to my website will be in the description down below. And I'll see you guys again next time. Peace.